Uh, so these are five tips for move, movable feast. I'm just going to go through them one at a time very quickly, and then we're going to open it up for discussion. Uh, the Movable Feast is an organization in Maryland. And Abby, can you just describe what the organization does? Sure. We serve uh, severely ill Marylanders. We have a home-delivered meals program. Um, so we freshly prepare meals and then deliver those right to their homes. Um, Perfect. Okay. Other okay. So it sounds like, in my mind... It sounds like a Meals on Wheels, but more for people that have specific illnesses. Is that correct? Right. Okay. All right. Excellent. And it's at no cost to our, at our, to our, to those who are receiving our services. Got it. So it's not a fee based. Okay. Are they generally lower income? They are. All of our clients fall within three hundred percent of the federal poverty. Oh wow. And okay. Oh okay. Okay. Average great. Yearly income is about eight thousand dollars. Oh, wow. Holy cow. So that's the average yearly income is $8,000? It is. Oh. $721 a month. Wow. That's, that's pretty, that's pretty poor. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so Abby, um, the one, it sounded like the, the biggest challenge that you had was really around engagement you know, posting content that on Facebook that's interesting to the Facebook fans, sometimes you hit the mark and sometimes you don't hit the mark. Is, is that fair to say? You know, outside of also doing all our grant writing and grant management, you know, all of our communication, you know, time is definitely um, hmm. a challenge. But within that, you know, obviously education is part of, of what we want to do yep. with our Facebook and Twitter. And it seems like that falls really flat. There's yeah, posts yeah. Posts that generate engagement and then posts that generate nothing. Yep, yep, got it. Okay, so the thing is that you, you, um, people generally don't want to be educated on Facebook. People generally don't want to be educated on Instagram. They don't want to be educated on Pinterest. Um, but what they do like is they like talking about things that they care about. So the key with Facebook and most other social media is that you kind of have to go where your community is. Start with start them. Start with them there, engage with them on topics that they're already interested in, they're already talking about, and then go from there. Uh, there's a book by a guy named Gary Vaynerchuk. You may have heard of this guy. He's not a nonprofit guy, but he's he's a social media marketing expert. I think you could call him that. And he's written a couple books. His most re recent book is called Jab, 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 Left Hook. Have you heard of it? I haven't. Have you heard of Gary? Do you know Gary Vaynerchuk? I have heard his name. Um, I haven't read anything. Yeah, he's he's a pretty smart guy. But the um, the book basically talks about this idea of give, 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 take. You know, okay. and he uses the analogy of boxing. You may not be a boxing fan. I'm not necessarily a boxing fan. But the idea with boxing is that you kind of do a couple of jabs to set up the situation, and then you do a left hook, and then you knock whoever it is, you knock them out. Okay. So that's his analogy. And, um, the way, the other analogy that I like to use, which is a little less violent <laughs> is, uh, fishing. So when you go fishing, you have to kind of throw out some, um, some, what they call chum. You throw it in the water, you get the fish coming, then you throw the hook in. Okay. So it's the same thing with Facebook in a sense, you kind of have to, and with Twitter and Instagram and Pinterest, you kind of have to put stuff out there. That's, that's, that's essentially 100% about the community, get them engaging, and then, um, you know, invite them into more deeper deeper conversations, okay? Uh, and it is also important to realize that Facebook is um, not, it's, you know, unless, I'm not saying this for you, Abby, but maybe for other people, it's not just a free, it's not like a free email list. It's not like a place where you could just go and post stuff and then hopefully someone will react. Unfortunately, that seems to be the common approach that many nonprofits have. And as you say, Abby, you're busy, right? You're dealing with, you know, grant writing, um, you know, d development work, uh, you know, direct mail, email, your website. There's a, there's a bunch of stuff you have to deal with. You know, the last thing on your mind is trying to read the minds of your Facebook fans. It feels almost impossible sometimes, okay? So in the interest of that, what I've done is I've actually – gone through your page. I've looked at insights. Uh, I've looked at other similar pages and I've developed five tips that you can uh, do right away that you could call that could call it low hanging fruit. 
you know, stuff that you can just easily and quickly do that I can almost guarantee will get you a, a result. Okay. So I'm, with that, I'm just going to jump right in and start. Uh, let's see here. Uh, so the first one is obviously to focus on what fans want. All right. And who are the fans that you're trying to satisfy? They happen to be women who are between 25 and 54 in Maryland. Uh, so what you might want to do is with your posts, target them. The first thing is target posts in the newsfeed to women who are between 25 and 54 in Maryland. Okay. Um, don't target every single post, but target the relevant ones, the ones that are more focused towards women. All right. If you have an update that's about an event where you want everybody to come to that event, regardless of who they are, yes, then publish that to all people. But the people that are most likely to engage with your content are women between 25 and 54 in Maryland. So those are the th those three criteria should be informing your decisions about what stuff to look for, what kind of content to look for. Okay. You also want to use this criteria when you boost posts. And I would recommend boosting posts. I wasn't able to see if you did boost posts on your page. Have you boosted? Um, you haven't. Regular no. basis. We, we have. Um, you know, we have a limited budget that way. So it's really targeted um, okay. in terms of what we decide to boost and not. Okay, perfect. Um, that's something that we do consistently. Okay. Now, when you do boost a post, because obviously your budget is limited, like you said, make sure you always target the post to women between 25 and 54 who are in Maryland and also, um, you know, use the key interests. Uh, but the last point about boosting a post is only boost content or updates that are performing really well. In other words, select an update where the engagement rate is high, because if you boost a post that happens to talk about an event, but that post for whatever reason is just boring and nobody's liking, commenting or sharing it, having more people see it won't really help you. In fact, it may even hurt because you don't want your boring stuff out there. You want your, you want your engaging, exciting and relevant and interesting stuff out there. You want people to see that stuff. So that's why it's always important to pick your best posts, uh, but then also, you know, target it by the criteria that I just mentioned. Uh, and then this, the other piece here is in terms of targeting, in case you're curious about how to do that, in the update on your Facebook page, you know, the publisher window, you can click on the icon, the targeting icon, and then just add gender, age, location, right? And then you can save this criteria so that you can target these fan, target posts this way in the future. And again, not all your posts, but just the ones that are explicitly for women that are of this age in the in Maryland, okay? So that's uh, focusing on fans. One more thing, you can use Facebook Graph, which you may have done, uh, but you, if you type in the search phrase, pages liked by women who like movable feast, you'll see a whole list of Facebook pages that are popular among the women who like your page. So what does this mean? This means that you can have great, these are great sources of content, so you can, certainly add these pages to your pages to watch list within Facebook insights. There's a feature that says pages to watch. Definitely add these pages to that list. When you go into insights, insights will show you the top performing posts from those pages. That way you can go in, let's say Woodbury kitchen. I don't know who these people are, but let's say that Woodbury kitchen has a top performing post and it's, it's the highest ranking post out of all of the pages that you watch, that's a post that you can simply click on and share with your fans. Uh, when you do share uh, with your fans, though, make sure that you tag those pages and those updates because that will increase the likelihood that the fans of those pages will also see that update at, when you publish it in the newsfeed. Okay, so um, you know, use Facebook Graph. Takeaway here is use Facebook Graph. Focus on uh, sourcing content from pages that are popular among the women who like your page uh, and then simply find you know specific updates from those pages and share those with fans okay so this kind of makes your job easier in a way you don't have to come up with something new you just go to these pages and see well what do they have going on that might be interesting and relevant to my fans and then just simply share those those uh, updates okay i would highly recommend doing a book giveaway because uh you know people that 
are connected to Movable Feast, what I can see is that they're definitely interested in food. They're definitely interested in cooking. They are interested in really great books. And here are just three books that rank in the list of books liked by women who like Movable Feast. So if you conduct a weekly book giveaway, uh, and to keep it cheap, you might want to go with a Kindle, you know, just say, hey, Kindle, you'll get a Kindle, you'll get a Kindle book, and then, you know, get the person's email and then just send them a Kindle book. I think those are pretty cheap many times. You could do it every other week. It depends on the budget. But the point here is that doing a timeline contest where you you publish, say, a picture of a book and you say, hey, um, you know, um, and, you know, answer this question for a chance to win or leave a comment for a chance to win this book. We will randomly select one person by this date to win this book and then, you know, just mail it out or send the Kindle, like I said. Okay. So this kind of gives fans an obvious incentive to engage with the, the posts. The more that they engage with the posts, the more likely they're, they're going to see future posts from your page as well, because of the way that the uh, newsfeed algorithm works. So this is kind of a, um, not a cheap way to game the system, but it is definitely an effective way. In fact, it's one of the most effective ways is to conduct some type of giveaway, like a timeline contest. Okay. So that will, these will definitely boost engagement, but obviously you can't do it every day. You might be able to do it weekly or every other week. Okay. Uh, the next one is uh, posting better link posts. I noticed that a lot of links that you post are from other websites and those look pretty good, but also, um, I, have you considered um, updating your own website or maybe getting a blog to put within movablefeast.org? Um, so the website is something that I've brought up a couple of times. Um, the response has been, you know, we don't have the budget for that. Um, mm -hmm. Currently we're looking, me and one other uh, coworker are looking into other ways um, because we don't think it really puts, movable feast in the best light. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, there yeah, really aren't any there. Yeah, there's just there's not regular content that can be shared from the website. That's the main right. issue. And ultimately, you know, you want to drive traffic back to the website so that people can join your newsletter, sign up for events and do all this other stuff. Um, right. In the short term, what you could do is let's say you have a link that you want to share from your website say to an event or, or something, you know, an email sign up page or whatever. Uh, what you could do is you can publish that link, but use Canva. Uh, and are, are you familiar with Canva? I am actually, I saw a post about it that you did about a week ago. Oh, great. Okay. All right. So you could use Canva to create, um, and what the, the template that you want to use in Canva for link posts is actually called Facebook ads. You, you don't, you're not going to take out a Facebook ad, but the dimensions specifically are 1200 by 628. Okay. So even if the link itself leads to a page that doesn't have any images, you know, like most of the links on your website, you can post that link, but then upload an image to Facebook to represent that link and then publish that link, uh, okay. you know, on the Facebook page. Okay. Uh, you could also do it with Post Planner. I don't know if you're using Post Planner. No, my you Post Planner is, uh, you know, a graph that I mark out what's coming up, oh. what you posted on, on what day. I do use Hootsuite if I'm going on vacation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Schedule, but, um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, you might want to check out postplanner.com. It's uh, they have a free version and it might work for your page. It, it, basically for a certain fan size, it's free. And for, for single pages, it's free, but it's, it's like a hoot suite, but it's specific to Facebook. The content is optimized much better for Facebook than, than automating or publishing posts from hoot, from hoot suite. Okay. okay. Um, so posting better link posts. These are just, this is just a list of uh, tips for the link posts that you can refer to later on. And number four, uh, I would create a fan photo albums, create fan photo albums around fan recipes, fan cooking tips, and fan meals. When I went to your page, I noticed that most of the albums had to do with your organization, you know, culinary graduation, culinary apprentice training, employee appreciation, um, and it's, it's, you know, a lot of information about the organization, but not so much about the fans. And it might be a good strategy to start looking to the fans, get content from the fans. 
and you could post an update, um, you know, a regular kind of uh, theme, if you like, every, say, Thursday. You know, Thursday is fan recipe day. What's your favorite recipe? Post a picture of what you've been cooking. Post a picture of a healthy meal. You know, what's a cool cooking tip? There's a lot of ways that you can enlist uh, content from your fr- from your fans. That way, it, it kind of makes your job a lot easier, right? Sure. Because people that, I guarantee you, if this is true, right? Look, the, the people that support your page, first of all, you know, if we do just a quick and dirty analysis, we see that they are women, right? Women, you know, now not all women love cooking, but if we look at the pages that they like, they are cook, you know, kitchen, atomic books. There's a whole bunch of uh, cookbooks that they like. Uh, these are the number one books that have to do with cooking, right? So in my mind, I'm thinking, hmm, they might be interested in food. They might be foodies. They might be interested in cooking. They probably are on Instagram. They probably have Pinterest accounts and they're posting their favorite recipes. That is perfect for um, this sort of approach where you're saying, you know, share your recipe. We want to see what you're making. Um, the, you know, I guess of all the research that's been done about social media and, and engaging people, you know, how do we increase engagement on social media? The one thing that is true in all the studies is if a brand or if a nonprofit kind of pushes content outward one way, which is kind of the old way of doing marketing, one way just for, to simply have people react to it, that's okay. It doesn't. It works okay, but it's much better to 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 invite the fans to contribute to actually create the content for you. It's much more effective, and they 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 probably will find it very meaningful. You know, to share. This is what I'm cooking. Do, do you guys have an Instagram page, or I, I I believe you're on Pinterest, right? Uh, we do have a Pinterest page that has not really had much done with it. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, well, don't, you know, I don't want to go off on, on Pinterest too much, but um, start with a fan fo- fan photo albums, you know, try and create a regular series of what's your, you know, what's your recipe? What's your recipe? If you have to even create it, get an image, create an image with Canva that represents the theme. Okay. You know, fan, fan recipe day, you know, whatever it might be. And just say, hey, today's fan recipe day, post a picture of your f- most recent um, creation. And they can obviously post a picture in the comments. You get all those pictures, you download them, you put in into a photo album, and then you have something that you can also email your email list with, right? You can send out an email. Check out all the recipes from our Facebook fans. Here they are. Here's a whole photo album of really great recipes submitted by our fans, okay? So see how see how this, it's a shift in the strategy rather than like just pushing stuff out there that's to be reacted to. You're kind of soliciting and inviting them to take part with you in, in, in the topic of good food. Okay. Uh, And then number five, I would say definitely reply to comments. I know that you're busy. You know, you just said that you're busy, Um, but replying to comments is important. So anytime someone comments on your posts, make a point of replying to that person. And if you can tag them, what that will do is that will invite the person back into the update. So they'll see that they've been tagged. They'll come back into the update. And especially if it's a conversation, if it's more of a discussion that is seeking, you know, further input, right? So I I can't think of an example right now with this one, but um, you could ask Hannah, you know, Hannah, you know, thanks so much for your comment. What do you think about this issue? You know, do you have a relative or what do you think? You know, you know asking them, kind of getting them involved in some way uh, more, you know. Um, but in general, I think you're doing pretty good. The other, I noticed a couple other things, but I wanted to keep this really brief and um, open it up for everyone else. Or Abby, do you have any specific questions that you want to get into? We can We can visit your page too if you want. I guess a lot of it comes back to me in terms of, you know, reading more, um, becoming more comfortable with analytics and how to apply those. Um, Hmm. You know, I feel like I do a lot of things, but that makes it hard to do things well, like one thing really, really well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the, so analyzing is, 
um, here, I'll show you how to, how I did it. It's, it's, uh, here's a movable feast right here. I just went to insights and within insights, um, and this information, by the way, in terms of the demographics, it doesn't really change a lot over time. You know, in, in other words, it's not like tomorrow, suddenly all the men will suddenly be engaged. You're going to see a massive shift. It's just not going to happen. So demographics isn't something that you need to look at every single day. But if you go to demographics, you definitely you notice women of a certain age. So these are the people that are engaging with your posts. This means, and this is historical data. You know, this is, this is data that says women are more like what this really says is that women are more likely to engage with their posts. Women between 25 and 54 in Baltimore are much more likely to engage with their posts than any other demographic. Okay. You don't really care about the fans, people that like your page or people that see your posts, because in the long run, you know, if someone likes your page, it doesn't really mean anything. If someone sees your post, that doesn't really mean anything. What really means something is if someone actually, um, engages with your content. And so you want to really focus on the, these people, uh, first and foremost, you know, uh, so, um, great. I think I covered everything. If you don't have any other questions, I'm going to open it up. Uh, Jennifer is asking, uh, and Abby, by the way, thank you. Was this useful? Well, thank you. Absolutely. Really? Okay. I tried to make it basically my whole approach with this Abby is to say, what's the low hanging fruit? You know, right. so like, look at these pages, start sourcing content from these pages, try some book giveaways. That's a pretty easy way to go. You know, tweaking link posts, creating a photo album. This is more of a long-term strategy, but you could do a post this week that says, Hey, what's your recipe? What's your recipe? And get into the habit of, of, of asking people for content. You could, if, if, if you wanted to really get this off to a good start, you could create an email marketing campaign that says, you know, we want your recipes, send it out to your email list, driving them to your Facebook page and encouraging your, you know, people in your email list to post content on your Facebook page. What that will do is that will also increase the amount of fans that you have on your page because chances are many of your email subscribers haven't liked your page yet. But when they get this message and they see that this email is really totally about them, it's not about your next event or movable feast or making a donation or anything like that. It's really about them. Wow. My, in my recipes, what I like to cook, my cooking ideas, my creations, that that's what they want to hear. Oh, that's great. So that they will, that's a really good way to kick this off. And then number five, uh, reply to comments. The quickest way to reply to comments is to make sure that you're getting notifications in your page and under settings. I'm sure you've already done this, but under settings, you can simply click on notifications and decide if you want to get them by email or on Facebook. When you get a notification, you can go to activity. And I always focus on, or, you know, I recommend focusing on just really the comment areas first. Okay. So if you're really busy, just focus on the posts that have comments, go in here, reply to a couple people, tag some people, and then you're done. If you don't have time, um, if, you know, do that with the comments and then other people, if they share a photo, you might want to like that, you know, oh, you can't like it. I can't like it here at least, but, you know, go in and like a couple of things, but people that leave a comment, definitely try and try and make that effort to uh, comment and reply back to them. Cause it does send a notification through Facebook showing up in here and it driving them back to that post where they can keep coming back in engaging the content, increasing the likelihood that they'll see future content from your page and increasing the exposure to their own personal network. So their friends see yet again that, you know, uh, uh, Celia is, you know, commenting on movable feast. Oh, there's Celia again, commenting over and over again. What is this movable feast about? So it's really, you know, the bigger picture of Facebook is really a word of mouth machine where you're getting your core fans or existing people engaging with your content so that they are essentially telling their friends about you. Okay. Um, and then I just want to answer a quick question here from, I saw a question from Jennifer, Jennifer Kennedy. Hi, Jennifer. Uh, Jennifer's asking the target icon is not where you showed us on my page when I asked when I add a status update on our Facebook page, is that something we have to turn on? Yes, that is something you have to turn on. Make sure when you, and I can't do it here, so I'm just going to demonstrate quickly on another Facebook page. 
I can't, I don't have access to, I only have insights analyst access to movable feasts. So I, I don't have all the features, but uh, if you go to your page, Jennifer, make sure that replies, I'm sorry, not replies, but uh, here it is, post targeting and privacy. You, you want to turn this on. As soon as you turn on tar, uh, post targeting and privacy, that icon that you saw in the slide, that targeting icon will show up and you'll be able to target by age, gender, location, uh, education, and a few other, a few other options. Uh, Doug is asking, when inviting fans to post to your page, is it better to allow fans to post uh, straight to the page or should post to the sideline first and wait for moderation? Huh? Let me see. Should posts go to the sidelines first? So the, you really can't moderate posts. Um, posts are posted to the page and that's it. Okay. It used to be where someone would post to the page and then you as a Facebook page admin had a chance to vet that and then po and then you know decide that it's okay and you publish it. But now when people post to your page, they just post directly to your page. What I would say, Doug, is the, the easiest and simple way is to have people just go directly to your page and post a comment. So just share the URL directly to your page and just say post a post a photo to the page. They'll know what to do. They'll go to your page. They'll see this, you know, this section right here. They'll upload a photo and they're done. If you complicate it and say, oh, you know, make sure that you post to this specific, you know, update on our page, you know, leave a photo in, a co in the comments, you complicate things and you're going to lower the likelihood that people will take action. If you just say post a photo to the page, they'll, people generally know what to do uh, and you, you're going to get more of a result that way. At least that's been my experience. Okay. Uh, Doug is saying, oh, Doug is saying, tell Abby that Doug Rose will be glad to come into her office sometime and help with her Facebook analytics. I am a longtime volunteer with MF and Abby and I have met before. Ah, beautiful. So Abby, you just got a volunteer, Doug Rose. I'm sure you have his uh, email and I, contact info. Is that right? I do. And I would love Doug for you to come in. Perfect. Doug is getting... Good. Doug is a Doug is the winner. Doug gets a big smiley face for this for this webinar. Um, and then Rosemary's uh, just leaving a comment and a question. I think I really like this idea of searching for books our fans are interested in. Is this something we search for on Facebook? Yes, Rosemary. This is something you search for on Facebook. In fact, I can do this with the Ellie Fund. Um, books liked by women who like the Ellie Fund. Oops, sorry, Ellie Fund, the Ellie Fund. Let's see, here we go. Okay, so we have Hunger Games Trilogy. There we go. Uh, Maximum Ride, The Giving Tree, The Bible, Harry Potter. Uh, you know, this may, you know, I don't know. I, I think with uh, Abby's example, it's much more apparent because um, they're cookbooks. A lot of them are cookbooks. And as soon as I saw this list, I said, well, okay, look at this cat lover snaps. Okay. Eat vegan, found magazine, the creative cure, 17 day diet. Um, you know, it just seemed like there were a lot of different, you know, food related old farmers, almanac. I know that's not cooking related. Uh, but there, there seemed to be a lot of cookbooks, cook books about cooking in the list. And that really gave me a huge, huge cue as to what the fans might be interested in. Cynthia is asking, um, she, Cynthia says, we are really frustrated that our posts do not consistently reach our fans. For example, one post might reach 1,200 and another post might only reach 138. Uh, one of the ways we use our Facebook page is to send out critical alerts. Okay, do not use your Facebook page to send out critical alerts. Um, I would either use an email list or a Facebook group, not a page, because a page, your posts are not going to be seen by all your fans. Uh, and what can we do to improve the reach? Uh, I think, Cynthia, a lot of the tips that we discussed here, you can definitely improve the reach. The thing about reach is that it shouldn't be a metric that you focus on because reach is all over the map. And Abby, I'm sure, would agree with this if you know Abby looks at insights you know, occasionally, I'm hoping. Um, and you know, reach is all over the map. Reach is no indication of post quality or you know, anything. You can't control it because Facebook is always updating the newsfeed 
And you can, you know, we can look at reach if we wanted to, but it wouldn't really be that meaningful. It doesn't really help us with anything. This post was seen by 693, and then we have another one that's seen by 189. The real important metric when it comes to Facebook is engagement rate. That's what you want to look at. Again, reach is going to be all over the map. It's, it's influenced by a number of things, okay? Countless things. Mostly it's controlled by Facebook, and Facebook is a public company. They, um, they're they manipulating these numbers so that they can basically sell ads. That's the short, the short, that's the short of it, okay? Uh, but what you have control over is the quality of the content and how well you connect with and engage with your community. So content, posting on your page, plus replying to comments, paying attention, being quick, being responsive, and, you know, really being a part of the community in terms of, uh, moderation, right? Uh, you know, comment moderation, essentially. Okay. So the, the best posts in this case are right here, 17% engagement rate. That means that, um, you know, 17% of the people that saw this post did something. They clicked on it. They liked it. They shared it. They commented on it. They viewed the photo. They viewed the video. They visited the website it's a, if it's a link. But here's the post right here. So this is a cue. You know, again, this is a cue post more stuff like this. And I'm not saying this to Abby necessarily, but, but, but to everyone, if you see posts with high engagement rates, that is a signal. This is stuff that's working. You should do more of this stuff. This is the stuff you need to do more of. Okay. Uh, and of course there are a lot of other things that we can always be doing to improve, you know, the engagement of our posts. Uh, but you know, you have to keep in mind that Facebook is a place where it, it's social media. Okay. And social media by definition is a discussion. It's a back and forth. It's a communication. It's a give and a, it's a take. Okay. There's no formula. There really is no formula for this. You have to put something out there, see how people react, respond, repeat. That's all it is. That's all it is. And you use insights as a way to get a cue, you know, get some hints, get some cues about what might work, what might not work, but, and then obviously employing these other ideas that we've been talking about, okay? So it's now 11.39. I wanna say thank you to everyone. I'm going to officially conclude this. I'm gonna stop the recording.